everyone, and welcome back to Seduce Me. I know, I know, it's been a really long time since I recorded anything for this Seduce Me Let's Play. To be honest, I was I was planning to cancel the uh, Let's Play, but then I thought, you know what? No, I am not going to do that. I am going to continue this Let's Play. And I am going to finish the game. But, before I do that, I have to address the fact that I am an idiot. Why am I an idiot? Because I played James's route all the way through, yet I never recorded his epilogue. So, let's jump right in to... Who seduced me a lesson in romance. What's your name? Well, Chris was the name I went by in the Let's Play, so I'm just going to go with that. Imagine, if you will, you live in a gorgeous mansion with the man of your dreams. You can do anything you have ever wanted, and there is nothing in the world that could hold you back. Well, that was my life. <laughs> I was the granddaughter of a CEO and had somehow earned his estate upon his death. The man of my dreams just happened to be waiting for me in the lobby of the mansion as I, as I moved in. Yeah, and he was, and he was a bloody mess on the floor along with his brothers. Mind you, he was mortally wounded and he turned out to be a demon, but that was beside the point. The man of my dreams, James, was smart, kind, caring, and very capable of taking care of not only me, but his four younger brothers. The five of them lived with me for a short while, making the house as lively as ever. However, I only needed James at my side, and soon enough, the, the younger four her brothers left us to our own devices, wanting to start lives of their own. Living with James was like a, a dream come true. He always cooked breakfast and helped me he keep the house clean, and during his free time, he, tend to the, he tended to the garden. There were often times where he and I would eat in the a gazebo outside, enjoying the sun and fresh air. Workwise, James had taken the, C the position of CEO at my grandfather's toy company and helped expand it to new heights. He did his very best to make it the best company it could be and wound up raising more money for charity than any other company on the planet. Good for you, James. Good for you. Needless to say, I was very proud of him and was happy to know that my, my grandfather's company was in good hands. I was even more happy to call him mine. James and I had lived a dreamlike romance for, for a year and a half. The thought of marriage often crossed my mind, but I left it to the hands of, of fate. If James was going to propose to me, then he would do it when he was ready. And a half a year later, and, and, just a, and just a little bit later, he would be ready because he will do it. He's going to do it. Let me tell you that. Needless to say, the conversations we would have were interesting, to say the least. Okay, first of all, we've got this new art style. And, yeah. One day, I found him lounging inside the library, lost in a familiar book. With the smirk, I crept inside and peered over his shoulder at the chapter he was reading. You really like that book, don't you, James? Jumping in his seat, James snapped out. Out of his train of thought and stared it up at me in surprise, making me laugh and grip the chair to keep from um, falling onto my knees from the, the hilarity. <laughs> Good afternoon to you too, James. Enjoying that story? I smiled playfully at James before taking the book out of his hands and looking at the cover. I was right. Love and Romance, A Study of Intimacy. Hmm, isn't there a visual novel that, that's called that one that Michaela Law has also created? James cleared his throat as he shook his he head and relaxed in his chair, trying to calm down from, from his sudden surprise outburst. You keep coming back to this book no matter how many others you read. Why? Truly? I handed the book back to James before walking around and sitting on the empty seat across from his. 
James nodded and placed the book down on the table between us while he crossed his legs. But you understand it, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I guess you're right, but what does reading that book over and over do for your research on it? James chuckled and leaned back in his chair. Completely? I'm sure there are some things you don't- even you don't understand if demons don't understand love. Provoked by my statement, James raised his eyebrow with an- um, with almost an amused grin. Yeah, that is- he does seem amused. I mean, that face though. Yep. For a moment, I remember James's powerful personality. This was a challenge of his intelligence, and such a deer would not remain undominated for long under his keen eye. As I mulled over the idea in the following seconds of silence, I could only find myself entertained by the idea of him trying to prove himself to me. To that, I smirked and lifted my chin a bit in a small taunting display. And if it was... The moment J James smirked at me and licked his lips ever so slightly made me question everything in the form of loud screaming in my head. WHAT DID I JUST THROW MYSELF INTO?! Still, my face remained unfazed and I continued to stand my ground as James replied. I stared at James for the longest time before settling into my seat, crossing my legs. If this was going to be a lesson in romance, then this was going to be one where I was the teacher. Alright then. Do you know what's the sexiest thing a person can a person can do for another? I promise there's only one answer. That was a lie. There there's obviously more than one answer, but I hope that he would draw the answer from our relationship rather than just form a generic answer. Either way, I would get him. James sat back and closed his eyes, thinking to himself and assembling his answer. As he opened his eyes, he smiled. Ah, uh, yeah! I agree with you there, James! His answer surprised, surprised me. I imagined him be trying to weasel out, weasel out the answer with a gesture or a specific action. I think you might be underestimating James here. As his words hit, hit me, my cheeks burned a soft pink in agreement. It was rather sexy to think about. The feeling of his hands along my body would make me feel like a goddess worthy enough to be ravished. The kisses on my the kisses on my skin would paint me in a glow of love and compassion. The way he held me always sent me to cloud nine. He had won this round, but I would get him. I nodded, pursing my lips as the smirk grew a bit. He interlaced his fingers and placed them on his knee, awaiting my next question. This had become a game of trivia, almost. Would he know all the answers? I pushed forward, now determined to prove that I was right. Okay, but what about sexy clothes? What color clothes should a person wear to attract someone? Another trick question. This is all a matter of opinion. It didn't take long for James to, to reply. Oh! As James' eyes traveled up and down my form, I suddenly felt naked. Hmm. Those definitely seem like quote unquote sexy colors. <laughs> Dang it! He won again, but at least I knew what to wear if I ever wanted to su seduce him into bed. I shook my thoughts at. I would knuckle down on my determination. I would not be beaten. I uncrossed my legs and leaned over her my knees, face as stone cold as a statue. James raised an amused eyebrow uh, once again as I threw a volley of questions at him, hoping to throw him off. Giving or receiving? Nightgowns or teddies? Oh dear. Kitchen or shower? I was going crazy at the ideas forming in my head. This game of question and answer became one that I heightened my 
my libido in the most shameless of ways. Still, I would not give in. The questions became about our relationship more than just general romance and lust. The more he answered, the more I learned about him. I would use his responses to my advantage later, but for now, the harvest for answers continued. Sensual or rough? Oh dear. Fast or slow? Handcuffs or blindfolds? Got him! Oh dear. James instantly covered his mouth with his hand, the slip and escaping his lips and making his true feelings known alongside the embarrassed blush crossing his cheeks. As his answer rung in my ears, my entire face became beet red. What? James was into both handcuffs and blindfolds? What about other kinky things? Well, this is going in quite an interesting direction. Whips? Rods? James shook his head. Still, he wasn't into any sort of violent play. I imagine not. Being called master? Silence. It made sense, him liking to play on his dominance. BDSM? James closed his eye. He was inside into his palm before where it fell to his lap and he lowered his head. As he spoke, I could tell he was being frank with me, dissolving his shame as he, he was speaking to the one he loved. Oh dear, James. Oh dear. Where did you learn about it? James chuckled softly, shaking his head. That explained it. However, I almost didn't expect it from James. Eric, maybe, but not James. Oh, ho, ho, girl, you never know what kind of sides you're going to find to it, a person, even if you think you know that, um, even if you think you really know them, there are always going to be sides that you're going to discover. There's always going to be new sides that you're going to discover about them. Let me just say that. Looking at him, I could tell James was trying to open was trying to come to terms with releasing this infor information to me. While he was talking to the one he loved, he knew that the topic was a pretty big one to drop in the game we were previously playing. I didn't want to make him feel uncomfortable about it, so I spoke up again. Are you interested in trying it? For a moment, James didn't answer. When he did, I could tell that he was being open about it. Not that I, now that I, knew, now that I knew of his true feelings for it. James looked back up at me, his expression neutral in an attempt to remain calm. I leaned back in my seat and closed, and closed my eyes. This game definitely taught me a lot of new things about James. Would I pursue this information and try it with him? That was up to me to decide later on. For now, though, our game ha had ended and it was unclear who had won between us. I had gotten my answer, but the last question threw both of us off. How would we determine the winner? I finally decided to stand up and walk over to James, letting him watch me as I sat on his lap, wrapping my arms around his neck, and leaning my forehead against his. Hmm, maybe you do know everything. James finally relaxed and nuzzled my nose with his before kissing me softly. Oh dear, this music. Oh dear. Huh? Me? Well, I'm just gonna say that this is an this is a well drawn drawing of James. Let me just say that. Yeah. James stared deep into my eyes, leaning back and removing his glasses. As his whiskey eyes began to glow a soft golden color, I gasped at, as he smiled playfully at me. Oh dear. I stared what I lied at James. Was he seriously going to ask me the same questions I asked him? James chuckled 
Jane chuckled lowly. No! 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 Not afraid! Not afraid at all! No! 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 I am not afraid. I am not afraid to do the sexy times. Fudge balls. Well, that was. Suggest me a lesson in romance, aka James's epilogue of Seduce Me. Okay, well that was interesting. I mean, I'm gonna admit, I've already, I've already played through this off camera, but it's definitely interesting to go through again, you know? Like, hmm. well, now you know. Now all of you know about how kinky James can be. So, <sighs> with this, hopefully, I can get back to the main series soon. Hopefully. So, thank you all for watching. Be sure to leave a like, and see ya in the next one. See ya!